Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for wanting to be with us. And we pray now that through your word, you will teach us that our warfare is not against each other, but against powers that are out to end our lives now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23 through 29. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It reads, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden by for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be uh, mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land, but the Egyptian, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. Now we started a few weeks ago with Abel and as a faith worshiper. Then from there, we went to Enoch as a faith walker. Then Noah uh, as a uh, as a faith working. And now our subject for today is Moses faith warring. Faith warring. Now, we, remember, we are on a series of uh, God wants to be with us. Amos asked a question in Amos, uh, in the book of Amos chapter three, verse three, he asks, can two walk together except they be agreed? And then uh, Paul in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse six, uh, makes the statement that, and without faith, it is impossible to please him, speaking of God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So faith is important if we want to be with God. Therefore, uh, we have the, had the sermons and, and, and we're doing this uh, section, uh, Abel, faith worshiping. Uh, he worshiped God through giving out of the right motive. And then Enoch, uh, by faith, walked with God. He, 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 he understood that, that you have to go through some things in, in this life in order to walk with God. And then God translated him. Since we are born unto troubles, and the only way we can get out of this world of troubles is death. But Enoch, was translated mean he was carried across. He was carried across the remaining troubles that were here for him when he got here. God and only God can do that. Only two people, Enoch and uh, Elijah, were taken before they died. Now this week again, we're working on Moses and faith warring. Moses presents us with a view of life as one big war to uh, stay alive. And this is not only a need to uh, stay alive physically, but more so a war for eternal life. Daily, we are at war for our lives. Satan works to destroy our health, wealth, and mobility. The health and wealth 
are easily understood, but mobility is controlling where a race or nationality of people can freely move about to. When we look at the world today, all around us, and even here in America, there is a movement to prohibit the free movement of people. That's the true, uh, that's true from neighborhoods to countries to continents even, controlling how high a race's level of prosperity can rise. That's controlling mobility. Controlling the level of health a nationality can rise to, the type of food that a, nat a race can eat to maintain good health, even the unhealthy produce sold in our neighborhoods is no accident. The Apostle Paul put it this way in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 through 18. This is the message version. He says, this is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all of his angels. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help that you can get, every weapon God has issued you, so that when it's all over, but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and the salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters and keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirit up so that no one falls behind or drops out. Whatever Satan works hard to stop, we can believe. That's what we need to do to, we need to work hard at using more and more of whatever Satan is working hard to take from us, to stop us from using, like praying, like God's word. We need to work harder and harder to use more and more of those things. Satan continues to work to destroy the family. For instance, Moses was uh, fortunate to have believing parents. For them to hide their baby son from the authorities was certainly an act of faith. Though godly parents cannot pass on their faith as they do family traits, they can create an, an atmosphere, an environment of faith at home and be examples of faith to their children. A home should be the first school of faith for a child. Three great three themes relating to faith are seen in the life of Moses. The first one is the refusal of faith. You have to, faith is, it, 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 you need it in order to refuse some things, to, in, in order to refuse going in certain directions at certain times, refuse to say some things that, that you want to say bad, refuse to, to do some things that, that feel good to you, refuse to even eat some things because they're good to you but not good for you. Verse 24 and 25 says, by faith, 
Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. As the adopted son of the Egyptian princess, Moses could have led an easy life in the palace, but his faith moved him to refuse that kind of life. He chose to identify with God's suffering people. True faith causes a believer to hold the right values and make the right decisions. The phrase pleasure of sin does not refer only to lust and other gross uh, sins. The phrase describes a way of life that we today would call sometimes even success or positions or prestige, power, wealth, freedom from problems. In other words, don't allow those and other things that people have first in their lives to be first in your life. I'm not saying that, that wealth Health, all of those things are not good, but just don't put it first. Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all of those things will be added to you. First place is reserved for God and him only. The second thing is Moses chose the right side. He chose the right side. Hebrews chapter 26 uh, part, well, told 26, but just a part, A said that we're interested in uh, showing that he chose the right side. It said, he considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt. Why? Because he was looking to the reward that was greater. There's a reward that's greater than any rewards we might get for anything in this life. And that's eternal life. Jesus died so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. Moses chose to suffer with the Jews instead of a life of pleasure with the Egyptians. There's a story of a mare of a large city that moved into a dangerous and decayed housing project to demonstrate the problems and needs of the minority race that lived there. And they didn't live there by choice. But she also kept her stylish apartment and in time moved back out of the slum to her apartment. Now we applaud her for her courage, but we have to admire Moses and how, how he chose even more in life. He left the palace and never went back to the old life. There's some things that we have a call to leave and never go back to. Moses identified with the Jewish slaves. Men and women of faith have to bear reproach and suffering. The apostles suffered for their faith. Believers today behind the iron curtain know what it is to bear reproach. If sharing in reproach is evidence of true faith. We must wonder how much true faith there is in, our, in America today. The third and final thing is there is the reward of faith. There is the reward of faith. God always rewards true faith. It may not come immediately, but it will ultimately come. Over against the treasures of Egypt, Moses saw the recompense 
of the reward. Just as Dr. Vance Havner said, he said, Moses chose the imperishable because he saw the invisible and he was able to do the impossible. Moses' faith enabled him to face Pharaoh without fear and to trust God to deal with his enemies. The strength of Moses was not a natural gift because by nature, Moses was hesitant. He was an introvert. He wasn't a quick volunteer. He wasn't very outgoing even. So this endurance and courage came as the reward of his faith. The faith of Moses was rewarded with deliverance for him and his people. Faith brings us out of our Egypts, of our sins in life. According to Hebrews eleven twenty eight, and faith takes us through our wilderness. Hebrews eleven twenty nine, and faith brings us in to our promised land, Hebrews 11.30. And when we trust God, we get what God can do. But when we trust ourselves, we get only what weak people can do. The experience of Moses is proof that true biblical faith means obeying God in spite of I need you to say it with me. Wait for it. True biblical faith in God means obeying God in spite of, say it with me, circumstances, in spite of consequences. There are some sayings that are true in during every generation. I believe Moses at some point said, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. James Cleveland had a song that he loved to sing. He said, I don't feel no way tired. And I don't believe, I don't feel no way tired. And, and I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. She says, I've been sick, but God brought me through. I've been troubled, but God brought me. I've been friendless, but God has been a friend to me. I've been lonely, but God brought me. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Something else that transcends generations is one Friday on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary, Jesus, the son of God, hung, bled, and died for our sins. They buried him on a bar, in a borrowed tomb, and in three days he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He came down through 42 corrupt generations. He chose to suffer with sinners rather than to stay in heaven where there is no suffering. You might feel that you are all alone in your trials and tribulations, in your sicknesses, in your poverty, in your sufferings and your shame. But don't forget Hebrews 13 and 5. Paul says, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, 
I will never leave you nor forsake you. Moses and faith warring reminds us and informs us that we are in a daily, in a constant war for our lives. And God has provided us safe passage through his son, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, give us the faith, the strength, the courage to trust you to keep us through the storms and rains of life, to keep us assured of the great reward of eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's all for today. I pray that you will stay safe. They talked about, they're starting to talk about a new uh, variant of the coronavirus that's uh, moving around in Africa and, and e Israel and some more places. And, and one doctor uh, even made the statement the other day, yesterday, I believe that uh, it's already here in America. So uh, continue to mask up, stay safe practice social distancing. A lot of people are not doing it. But if they don't care about you and don't care about themselves, then you care about you and you care about them. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.